What'd you find? What'd you find? Breakfast? <laughs> oh, I see him. He's right there. Here comes. You guys for sure want a closer look. Because you want to know if we could track him down and eat him this morning for breakfast. You guys noticed how he turned his back to me. And he's showing me his defenses right now, which are on the back. His tail is actually right there. That's not his head. His head behind. He's going to give me another defense flick here in a second. And what we don't want him to do is back up real quick. He's made a wall. He's fuzzed up his back. He's fanned out. Because that is the business end of the porcupine. That's what you don't want to get. All the lore around the porcupine was that you'd save that. If you're really, really, really hungry, and I have been really, really hungry on survival challenges before, they're easy because it's, it's kind of act like a buffalo. Jeremy's just hanging around to see if I'm going to get <laughs> a uh, quill in the face. I'm more curious to see what he's going to do. So now he's got out of his defense posture. He started moving. He's going to go up around the culvert here maybe. So he's finding a nice little den here. He's up at the end. He wants to go back in, but he knows I'm here. He got droppings right there. He always keeps his back to me. There he goes. He's gonna bristle up, bristle up, bristle up. There you go. No, he's gonna go, he's gonna hustle. Look how slow they go. They don't care about anything. And so they're just like, they only move as much or as fast as they need to. He's just like, take one step, if you take one step, but I don't want to take any more steps than I need to. It's kind of like a drag, right? It's bringing that, dragging that tail. All right, guys, we're making it way through the woods here. We got to get down to the pond. There's a beaver dam down here, beaver house, beaver lodge. Hopefully, that's according to the map. Got to get through all this stuff. There's no trail down in here. Pretty rugged stuff. And we got to make up our mind of where we're going to decide we're going to survive here. We're either going to do it on this pond or the other pond. All I know is if we don't get our stuff together soon, we're going to be in big trouble. All right, I got to put the camera away. No way I'm getting through here carrying this around. You guys got to come along with me. pile of sticks here which is the lodge and we're looking to see if there's any activity in here maybe there's a beaver maybe there's one in here Jer this is exactly what the trappers were doing way back when you see that that breathing hole so every every house every lodge will have a place where obviously they need the air to come out come in come out air exchange so they don't suffocate so we're basically, we're trying to decide if we're going to set up here on this lodge. We can't trap two spots. We won't have enough time. So we're going to pick between this spot or the other spot. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on the video. I want to thank my sponsor, Athletic Greens. I'm a huge fan of this product. It is comprised of 75 ingredients from whole sourced foods, vitamins, minerals, and probiotics and other good things that help your body work optimally. As you guys know, I've been having some issues with my digestion and my gut, and it's been tricky for me to find all of the good things that I need. So that's where Athletic Creams comes in. It is a very simple product to use. This is how simple it is. Everything you need right here, aside from that, you've got your container, and this makes mixing the product that much easier. And simply add one scoop of the powder mix and shake, and you're all set to go. So I look forward to drinking this every morning on an empty stomach. I feel like I get better digestion that way. And let me tell you what, it actually tastes really good. It's 2022 and I don't know about you, but it's always about New Year's resolutions. And for me, I'm always trying to make a better version of myself. And a big part of that obviously is simplifying things. So instead of having a medicine cabinet full of different things and vitamins and minerals that you need, it's better to have it all in one shot. AG contains all kinds of vitamins such as vitamin C, zinc. Guys, use my links down below at athleticgreens.com slash the wood of That's gonna give you one year supply of vitamin D and five travel packs. It's a new year. It's time to invest in your health. If you don't have good health, like I've been struggling with, then nothing else matters. So take some time, use that link, invest in Athletic Greens and invest in yourself. So big thanks to Athletic Greens and let's just jump right back into the video.
Oh, we went all the way up to the front and there was uh, just a little tiny beaver house. One of the lodges here, you can see a couple piles of stick, sticks, some older cuts on top there. Uh, but as you can tell, it's barely above the surface of the, of the snow, of the ice. So that would not be a very active beaver dam, beaver lodge. We got a, a bigger beaver house here, but we don't know if it's being used. So Jerry's gonna pop a hole in here. We already got one hole in here. I dropped the camera down and it was nothing but mud. Hard work with that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe use a hatchet to get through and we'll drop the camera down. See if we can find some food down there. Something to eat. Mud. <laughs> it's still too shallow. Yeah. Well, third hole? Yeah. What'd you find? Mud. <laughs> so like a, there's like, uh, there's not as much mud as before, but yeah. it's not much deeper. No. There may be like two feet, so there's no runs, there's no beavers here, Jeremy. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hello. So yeah. we'll go after the smalls. Yep. Squirrels, hares, Sasquatch. Yeah, the little ones. <laughs> I'm not tangling with the, the big little, one. The baby Sasquatch. Yeah. I, I watched a movie you might like. If you like Sasquatch. I don't. It's called Exist. I know, I did. <laughs> but it was a good movie. It was well done. It's yeah. called Exist. Harry and the Henderson? Exist. Oh, okay. It's more It's more like a horror oh. slash Sasquatch movie. Okay. Really well done. Kind of like a B movie. So that, you have to like the B movie. You I have like to be like, B all right, I'll give it a go. But it was really well done. They had like cameras and GoPros and stuff. Yeah. But it was really well weaved in. So you guys watch that. Ex oh. Exist. Exist. So okay. you don't have any Sasquatch stories? <laughs> no. I only have one, and that was when I, that we were camped out, and I just kept hearing something throw rocks in the pond. Yeah. Which is incidentally is in the movie exist. There's some rocks. There's a rock scene in there. So they maybe Did you they produce they this throw. movie. No, I didn't. Are you plugging your own movie? <laughs> I'm plugging my own movie. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could hear them in there. Sometimes I've I've heard heard them inside the lodges in the winter. But uh, aside from that, we'd want to have like an active run on here, some place where there was some hollow ice. When the beavers are coming in and out of the lodge, they'll breathe and ex let uh, air bubbles come up and then the, the uh, ice would form poorly. So it'd be, have more of a hollow sound. There could be other animals living in here like otter and muskrat, mink. All right guys, good day. We are at the uh, bush crap shelter. We're gonna do a bunch of things today. We got some beaver traps. We're gonna go check a pond down here. There's a pond up there. And I've also got some uh, rat traps. We're gonna try to trap some squirrels. Should have hired an engineer. Terrible bushcraft skills. <laughs> More work goes into cutting all these logs into actually building the bushcraft camp. Well, clearly, because it keeps falling so, down. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's it's worth rebuilding it because you've already got all the materials there, right? It's just like it has to be put together better. So the one time our roof angle was too steep, so the the boards all slid off the back. So I got to raise the back one up, and I brought some real rope i got some some better paracord from uh princess auto and this stuff here that i was using before is too stretchy so i'm just going to use the better stuff i was going to cut you off there and say it's all it's worth rebuilding but you're not supposed to have to rebuild it. No, well, <laughs> we've we, we, you've rebuilt it once already did i yeah. rebuild it once well, or did actually, we get we I didn't get to it. it twice you and i rebuilt it and i rebuilt it <laughs> this is going to be the third time <laughs> and, uh, maybe we'll finally get it right don't don't learn bushcraft skills from either jeremy or me but you can probably learn some trapping skills <laughs> i think i'll have better luck doing that than uh well we, we gave it a go it's a trial and error process we shouldn't sell ourselves too short because i have seen other bushcraft people come back to their shelters and they're always destroyed too the roof back on right away bottom i just have to sweep out a little bit our bench back wall i don't know is it messed up for good um we're just I'm not gotta sure that part of the canvas was ripped but um part of it might be good the canvas was just along the back here to kind of keep some of the wind out and uh capture some of the heat from the fire in front but uh, it's getting about the time where we need to go start looking for food at least set some traps around here i've seen some red squirrels chattering so we could probably set them around camp here and I know for a fact there's some snowshoe hairs. Is that the third time you've done that? I'm doing it differently this time. <laughs> Gonna do it better? Yep. Gets better every time. Get some lunch, dinner, <clears throat> brunch, supper, whatever you want to call it. All right, guys, we got secret weapon here. C4. 
Secret weapon. This uh, should be in your survival kit, your bug out bag. Victor rat traps with a modification. So what I've done here is I've taken the, uh, the business end of the trap here and I've added a whole bunch of elastic bands just around there. And you guys can do this with your mice traps too, your mouse traps, and they work really good too. And there's no better bait for mice and rats. And in this case, red squirrels than peanut butter. If you guys ever look at uh, these traps, they have an outline of the kill zone here. So if you follow this down here, that's the kill zone right there. So that's where you don't put your fingers. I brought myself a screwdriver. And so this you might think is kind of silly. Why would you bring a screwdriver? We're gonna find four trees that we can set these on and hopefully catch yourself some lunch. You hear that squirrel over there? Yep. Yeah. All right. Heard a few around. I'm gonna go get them. We get 75 cents in fur. And if we get four of them, a meal, I would say. Um, I would say that would be a good sign, except for the fact that I just saw Jeremy in here and he was pulling out that tree. So he knocked the bark off. I can't tell what that is. Some kind of, oh, maybe a grouse. So where is this guy leading to? Maybe there's a good spot over here. But those tracks, they just go through here and they look like they go up that tree. The business end of it down like that, right? So the squirrel is going to come up here and then we'll give him a perch on that branch there. And then you can work on it right about head height. Keep out of the money spot. Like I shouldn't be putting my hand there like that. And then when I let go, boom, my hand this way. And if it goes off, it doesn't get my fingers. So you just let it off like that. We're good to go. Now we're trapping. That's it, boys. Easy enough. As set number two, the squirrel comes up and he goes, ouch. There we go. But keep your thumbs clear. You're good. There we go. Three traps set. One more to go. It's like we're doing a, a trap line for squirrels. Squirrel line. Learn a new skill. Who knows? Maybe it could save your life. Maybe it could mean life and death. This doesn't damage the tree, by the way, guys. Little holes like this. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Little squirrel goes up in there and tickles that and it's dead. Jerry's got a fire going. We're going to burn that right down. Got a nice bed of coals. So all we can do is get the peanut butter wafted and out here. Maybe cook some peanut butter. We'll do like a peanut butter burn. Yeah. And then really draw them in. Or or we'll just eat peanut butter. One of the two. There we go. <laughs> there might be more calories in that peanut butter. There might be. Than in a squirrel. Say like two squirrels a piece would be about right. 26 a day. Is that what it is? That's what it is to make 26 squirrels per day. 26 red squirrels a day. No way. I just heard one of the traps go off from this direction here. So that should be a good sign. Uh, I've been hearing uh, black. There was a black and a gray squirrel up in the tree. And there was a red squirrel too. Pretty sure I put one here. Oh, there it is right there. There it is. But uh, there's nothing There's nothing in the trap. Like, what the heck? Nothing in the trap. But look down on the ground. <laughs> so the thing about these black squirrels um, is they're way too big to fit their head in the money spot. So <laughs> I think this guy got knocked out. So you can see like unless he's just in the right spot, it looked like he got hit like right in the back of the head and uh, knocked him out. I've had that happen before. Um, this is not the target trap for that. It's obviously a bycatch, but you know what? There's a heck of a lot more meat on this guy than there is on the red squirrel. So we're gonna take this guy. <laughs> Nature provides. Anyway, we'll reset that trap. And then uh, we got a squirrel for dinner. There's so many of them around here. We're just sitting around camp, getting the fire going. And there's like literally activity all over the place. And the red squirrels get pretty agitated because they get very territorial. So they start chattering at me. Oh yeah, it's a male. And he's got big, big testicles. What do you guys think? Should we try to eat the testicles? <laughs> Look at how big those nuts are. They're absolutely massive. I've never tried squirrel testicles or any kind of testicles for that matter. So that might be worth a shot. We've eaten almost every other part of every other animal. The testicles is one of the things that we've overlooked every single time. We experimented eating the brains, but testicles is one of those things that I've never tried. So let's give it a go. I got that squirrel all cleaned up. I 
can't show any of that stuff anymore. Unfortunately, it's just the way she goes, but I have to get some water. Um, I'm not gonna do anything super fancy with the squirrel, except for the uh, testicles. I got those pulled out. Um, well, maybe we'll put them on a stick so we can experience the full flavor of them. But what I need to do is get some water and the best way to do that is down at the creek. I won't go down the pond, it's a little bit of a jaunt. This is really precarious. I don't know where the water starts. I feel like I might be on it though. I feel like I'm on the river right now. It's going to be tricky to get a scoop here. Like that's definitely ice. And then if there's like a couple feet of water here. <laughs> I reach and see what happens. We get wet, we get wet. Oh, one more inch. I'm gonna spread the weight out. Oh, come on. Oh, I don't want to go one more. There we go. Oh, I got it. Uh, oh, I didn't get enough though. Okay, there we go. Ha! Wow, it's pretty down here. This is the outlet from where the beavers were supposed to be hanging out. <laughs> that were never hanging out there. I will do a through the ice trapping. Uh, hopefully a survival challenge if you guys are up for it. I do have some other spots in mind. Jeremy figured they were around here because they were they were active in the fall, but I just don't think they have enough food here. It's mostly coniferous trees. Oh, why do I keep going backwards? It's like life. Uh, two steps forward, one step back. That's survival too, isn't it? It's everything. It feels like this whole past year has been just really 10 steps back after 100 steps back. It's only expensive if you live in Canada. It's like $50 shipping, it's ridiculous. I keep talking to Zach, I'm like, what the heck's going on? Why are you charging my Canadian friends? <laughs> My fellow Canadians, 50 bucks for shipping, but he's like, well, it's like the delivery and then it's the duties and then it's the, I'm thankful that Zach paid attention to it. So if you guys order, just be, be forewarned. There is no easy way and I cannot deliver it from Canada because I don't even get any product at all. <laughs> I have to order it from him. I'm gonna find out if our squirrel is any good to eat and if it's not good to eat or if it is good to eat, we'll move on to the squirrel balls. No matter what, I gotta get a stick. There we go. I can fish out my squirrel. I don't know <laughs> if it's gonna be ready. I don't know if it's gonna fall off the bone. Ow, it is so stinking hot. There we go. <laughs> just like the old times, boys. We're gonna do it just like the old times. Put some adobo on there. Oh, it's all clumpy. All I have is clumpiness. I gotta order more from the website. Oh, it might be ready. Well, that's ready. I think at this point, the best thing to do would be to put it on the fire and roast it a little bit. But it's uh, it's pretty tender, actually. I'm gonna take a big bite of the rump. Oh yeah, tender. It's good. Is it? Actually. Oh, you're already picking out. Yep. We're gonna eat the squirrel balls. Are you? <laughs> you are too. <laughs> you try some squirrel balls or are you gonna chicken out? Where's the- Just uh... take a bite, take a bite right there. You gotta go this way a bit. Okay. Oh, just, just right off the stick. How good is that? Like for for like being really for a quick cook. <laughs> for being really lazy about it. I thought it was gonna be rubbery, but no, that's good. It's not. It's good. Those oh. are raw balls. I'm not eating They're raw right balls. They're right there. We gotta put them on a stick. Oh, you're gonna do them on a stick. You want boiled balls? Right. Boiled. Boiled balls or like 
I don't want to say I'll take them any way they come because <laughs> I'm getting no end of jokes about it. Well, you got to finish that leg now. Okay. You're going to cook your own balls. How, how are we going to put both balls on the same stick? Jamie's Good. carving up his own stick so he can cook his balls to his own per per perfection. Yeah. Our own standards. Is this the left or the right? <laughs> Love to taste it. <laughs> it's part of the it's part of the game. You gotta figure it out. Oh, they're frozen. <laughs> yeah. The balls are frozen. Um, I'm gonna threat like this way. Through the vast deferens. Yeah, through the vase. <laughs> so I'm actually if you actually want to eat balls, the thing about <laughs> balls. Don't sound too testicles. Don't sound too much of an expert. Is uh You've done this before. Lots of people eat them. There is a <laughs> there's a skin. I'm just gonna I'm so I'm, I'm just gonna do it dirty. You actually want to you remove this? that and just cook what if this you don't? part. Well it'll probably hold together. You won't get the full effect? Oh, yours will hold together better. Because now mine's gonna split like a it's like trying to thread a popsicle. Yeah. Well I'm just gonna we should probably stuff it with some seats, some spruce boughs or something too, right? Stuff it. For some flavors. Try it. <laughs> Don't burn your balls. Now we can do ball jokes. Because we didn't catch a beaver, Jeremy. Ah. So we got to do ball jokes all day long. I'll bring you guys closer. What do kids call them these days? What, balls? Yeah, I heard somebody call them nards the other day. Nards? Like, oh, that's... Well, that's so 1980s. <laughs> that's true. You're gonna lose your, don't yeah. lose it. If you lose it, yeah, you're, well, yours I don't is. Well, how else I'm gonna cook it? Because once you take the skin off, they're actually pretty uh, fragile. You're gonna be eating them raw. You're gonna get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have little baby squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> we have not made ball jokes yet. We've never eaten balls. We well, ate almost. Mean we can't make ball jokes. Oh, we've eaten everything else. Not the balls. I've eaten sperm, fish sperm. Fish burn soup was delicious. It's called milk. Right. Wow. It's super wet. Delicious. Oh yeah? I was in Maine. Because we yeah. tried to figure out what to do with them. With sack? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, it's cooked. I don't know. Are you ready to go? Sure. You're not even scared. You don't care. Oh, no. You eat I ball, don't. balls all the time. They're just... Uh, Like they have a creamy texture. <laughs> are you just saying that? Nope. No. <laughs> they are. They're like a soft cheese. <laughs> Mine's going to be hard though. It's got the shell on. Yeah. Yeah, yours is going to be all weird and chewy. Firm balls. There right, you goes. First time eating balls. Oh, it's very hot. Is it going to explode in my mouth? I feel like it's going to explode in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's warm. That's actually really good. Yeah, but was it really chewy? No. Oh no? It's like the outside is chewy, like calamari. Yeah. The inside yeah. is like an oil. Did you get that? Well, you because well, you cooked this. The juices different. were all trapped in the skin, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. there is. If you if you look it up, like lamb testicles, you can because you can get them from the butcher. You do have to peel the skin off, and then usually you cut them into medallions and you bread them and fry them. There's actually nothing wrong with that. It tastes like a hot oil, like a buttery. Yeah. It still got that buttery. Yeah, yeah. That buttery taste to it. But yeah, that I was, was good. I was good. Way to go. We can delay a little bit because the squirrel activity is high right now. Yeah. So we want to give them a little bit of time. And we'll catch a couple extra ones. So I walked past one of the traps and we got ourselves a red squirrel right behind the head. Perfect catch. So we're gonna pull this guy out and uh, we're gonna check our other ones just like that. And we're probably gonna reset it. So we got this one, one red squirrel so far, one porcupine we could have ate, and then we got another trap over here. We're gonna check, see if we don't have more than one thing to eat this morning. Although they're gonna be tricky because they're frozen solid, so we're gonna have to get that fire going in order to defrost these so that we can actually undress them so we can eat them. Yeah, look at that. Two for two. Two for two so far. I checked Jeremy's trap underneath. 
it is not triggered. You can see it under there. You get the focus date down in there, not triggered. Now, so far we're two, two for three on the bunch. I have two left. I hope I remember where I put them. All right, uh, this is a weird one. <laughs> this is a weird one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could see, but <laughs> I caught a roughy, <laughs> a roughed grouse. It must have been you know, picking at this tree or whatever because there's a whole bunch of stuff laying on the bottom. So I'm always up there picking out seeds or whatever. And uh, it looks like it got a little bit of a tussle. <laughs> But it must have leapt up on this branch here and uh, pecking away, maybe smelt the peanut butter and then uh, smack. <laughs> I think that's got to be a first, catching a rough grouse in a rat trap. <laughs> but hey, we'll take it. Frozen solid, so I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to eat it uh, this morning. That's the hard part about like leaving stuff overnight. Um, this might have been going up to roost or whatever when it got dinged <laughs> but hey there you go some surprise catches jeremy has said he's he's actually snared hairs or snared a rough grouse before which i think would be kind of interesting um you know obviously you're not setting these purposely for them but you're not going to let it go to waste if you catch something like that <laughs> what you got you ever seen that a grouse? Yeah, a roughy grouse. I've seen rough grouse before. I in saw the, one yesterday when we were walking. In the rat trap. In the rat trap? Yeah. Like a peanut butter eating grouse? Yeah. <laughs> That's a first. You said you snared them before. Twice, yeah. Yeah, because they, they'll walk the same trails <clears throat> as the uh, hares because it's easy walking and then they, some, they get tangled up in the snares. It's camouflaged against your uh, camouflage. Yeah, you can't, can't focus. No. <laughs> Frozen as a rock, though. Yeah, it looks like a paper airplane. <laughs> our, our, our stew's a little bit, a uh, little bit rock solid there too. So that's the tricks, the tricks and tribulations of uh, winter stuff is everything freezes and then you can't process it. So yeah. I don't know how the trappers used to do that. I imagine they would pull like a beaver right out of the water and like process it right away. Otherwise, they'd have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of beavers to carry <coughs> around and nothing to yeah. eat. Yeah. <laughs> get big fire going that's the only way to do it here big fire let it burn down and then we can get our pot back on there because like i said it's sort of solid as a rock but uh we can put it here to kind of get it started a little bit and then we can hook it once the flames get a little bit lower otherwise we burn our rope which we have done before it, it fell off uh yesterday but thankfully it didn't spill the whole pot and drop those two guys in there in the pool the cold pool well it's warming up now I'll probably drop it a little bit what we've been doing is uh just pull the feet out a little bit and that drops it down and we don't have to adjust the fire too much oh, i just adjusted the fire too much <laughs> it spilled over the top it'll come back up squirrels are too big Oh, I didn't think of that. I could get away with a lot more movement before. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what a red squirrel tastes like. Yeah. We have heard, like I, I've eaten one before, but it was kind of stewed up and I didn't pay attention to it too much. Yeah. But I was told that it made it taste like pine, pine nuts or something, because that's what they eat. I get this to focus on the little tiny, maybe you can't see the proportions there, but it is a very tiny animal. And you figured what's 20, you'd have to eat 27 of these? Sam Thayer did the math. <laughs> 27 of 26. those? 26. I that think. includes the, no, 26, but then if you include the skin and the brain and the eyeballs, it's like 18 or something, it's a lot. I don't know, man, that's pretty small. So we're gonna eat it, I'm gonna eat it nude. There was a little bit of wadobo in the sauce, the water, the juice. So, question is, does it taste like pine needles? It tastes like a hair. Huh. <laughs> it's no different. 
What are you eating, hair? Yeah, it tastes like a hair. <laughs> yeah, it would. A little different from squirrel. <laughs> They're all the same. <coughs> tastes like rabbit, tastes like that red kind of small game meat. So, I don't know, I wouldn't pass up a red squirrel or a black squirrel or a gray squirrel or a rabbit. No, they're good. Or a beaver tail, it's all good. Just on the way out here and uh, we noticed that porcupine, <laughs> he's been busy, look at that. He chewed the bottom of that off like crazy. That, I don't think was like that before. I think this is what he was working on when we came up on him this morning. See all the chew marks down at the bottom. So this is just for kind of future reference if you are looking for food and you're in a survival kind of deal and you can check for these chew marks at the bottom. If he goes all around that tree, he's gonna girdle it and kill it. Here's a little bit of the urine too. So I imagine that's him as well. And uh, Jeremy found that he was still in the tunnel. I guess he found a nice little shelter and they're still see there. Oh yeah, he's coming up the other side. <laughs> Where are you going, buddy? 